So um, thank you very much. It's a great honor for me to be here and have this chance to talk about the stages of Super Nemo, the Super Nemo experiment. So this is the title of my talk. I will start by describing briefly uh, what is the neutrino orbital decaying and how we want to look for it in with the Super Nemo technology. And I will move on on the demonstrator. We are making a demonstrator with 6.3 kilos of isotope of selenium-82 to study this interaction. And uh, I will talk about how this demonstrator builds on the technology of NEMO3 and all the series of experiment called NEMO. And uh, then I will describe the commissioning of this detector and uh, how, what is the physics scope, how we will search for neutrino orbital decay and study also in details the neutrino orbital decay of selenium-82. So starting by brief introduction about the physics, we really need that, but I'm going to go briefly on this, on this, on this slide. So um, why are we looking for, for neutrino orbital decay? Because um, it's an interaction where matter is created and the conservation number is violated, meaning that uh, it's a gateway toward phase B on the standard model and requires neutrinos to be by a particle, uh, which is also the other side of the model, and uh, can help answer, why are we looking for this? Because we can help answer a number of questions in particle physics and cosmology, including, for example, why neutrinos are so light and uh, why there is only matter in the universe. And uh, in principle, you take this interaction here, which is a neutrino, two neutrino orbital decay, the laser was here, okay, uh, where you basically, it's two beta decays uh, at the same time when you have two antineutrinos and two electrons produced and you replace with another diagram, one of the most simple possibilities, this one, where you have an exchange of a virtual neutrino here, and the final state contains only electrons. This is why uh, in the interaction the matter is created. And the signature of this event, this is the signature of the two neutrino orbital decay, which is uh, similar to the single beta decay um, spectrum, and the signature for the, for the neutrino orbital decay is this peak here at the Q value of the interaction. Of course, this is just a smear peak because of your energy resolution if you have, if you have a resolution in your detector. Um, and so this is the idea of Super Nemo, how the Super Nemo works. So the principle is that um, Super Nemo is the only experiment that uses tracking calorimetric uh, technology in which the source is decoupled from the detector. So you have a source foil here where the interaction is produced. Then you have uh, tracking volumes where you track your electrons coming out from the source. And then you have a calorimeter which measures the energy of these two electrons. So this is how Super Nemo works. And this ad ad has advantages. For example, the fact that the source is the cover of the detector allows you to, in principle, to test different isotopes at the same time. And this was done, for example, in Nemo 3. And also the fact that you can access the kinematics of the event, the full kinematics of the event, allow you to reject back on to perform particle identification, and also in principle to distinguish different mechanism behind the interaction. So uh, how about the same that we are building in Modan? So first of all, uh, this is where or the detector will, is, is, is located right now in the LSM, uh, Modan Underground Laboratory, is on the border between France and Italy, and it's a beautiful, uh, and it's a beautiful landscape here. And indeed, the, 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 the laboratory itself is in the uh, highway tunnel that connects the two countries, uh, right in the middle, roughly in the middle of the, of the tunnel where uh, we can profit for, oops, how do I go back? Okay, from the, from the mountain to shield us from muons, and in fact, uh, LSM is one of the best laboratories in terms of, uh, of shielding, uh, and it has 4,800 4, meters worth of the equivalent of, uh, of, uh, of shielding. And uh, how the demonstrator is, uh, how it consists of, first of all, you need a source, as I mentioned before, a source foil, and more specifically, we have this 34, 34 source foil in total a mass of 6.3 kilos of CNO82, which has a Q value of roughly 3 MeVs. The total surface is 13 meters, and they are arranged like this in, in one after another to have this flat uh, surface. And then uh, to produce this foil, first of all, you, you have to enrich your selenium, and there are different techniques to purify your, your mixture. And once you have a purified mixture, which looks something like that, you pour it uh, and mix it with PVA and pour it and wrap it into mina to get the source foil, which looks like this. And then it's hanged uh, to produce, to, to form our, our source. Then you sandwich this source between tracking volumes, and this tracking volume for Super Nemo are drift chambers. So uh, there are roughly 2,000 Geiger cells uh, composing uh, this drift chamber arranged in uh, 113 rows, uh, 113 rows with nine, nine cells each. 
and uh, this whole volume is immersed in a magnetic field of 20 to 25 Gauss to distinguish alpha that goes straight and electrons and positrons that bend on different directions. And the principle of, of the drift chamber is that when you have an, uh, every, every, every one of this, of this cell here consists of a 9 wire at uh, 1800 volt, and when your particle crosses the cell, it produces an avalanche, so you take the avalanche on the anode wire, and the drift time gives you the distance from the wire, while the different signal on the, on the cathode ca end cups give you the Z of the interaction, so you can combine the, the different cells to reconstruct your track very precisely. Then you sandwich in turn is stuck into two calorimetric wall. There's two main wall, uh, and this wall consists of optical modules. So optical module is basically a cube of plastic scintillator uh, coupled with a photomultiplier. It looks something like that. Uh, it has magnetic shielding for each of the photomultipliers, and then it's wrapped into Teflon and Mylar to isolate it optically from every other optical module. So every optical module is an independent detector in itself. So this, are, this is how one of the main wall look like. As I say, there's 20, uh, 20 uh, columns of 13 optical modules each. And in, oh, you also have different of, of the other walls. You have X wall that sandwich the detector on the two short sides, and also gamma Vito that cap the detector on the bottom and on the top. And this, this one are con consists of less of particular modules. There's 4 times 16 and 2 times 20 for the, for the, gamma, for the gamma Vito. And so this is the core of the detector. And then there's also calibration systems. There is two calibration systems we're using in Super Nemo Demonstrator. The first one is uh, consists of a uh, source deployment system. So we have an automatized source deployment system that, that, that lowers the sources alongside the source foils. And this is for this is, this is gamma sources and neutron sources to calibrate the detector absolutely in energy and also to study, to study background. And uh, this, uh, when, when we run the detector fully, will be uh, on a weekly basis, cali weekly basis calibration of roughly 10, 15 hours. And then the, 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 the second system consists of a light injection system. So you have LEDs pulsing light in every mo optical module singularly with, uh, by means of, of, of fibers. And also in a reference, uh, in reference optical modules. So the idea here is that you can intercalibrate different optical modules between each other in time and energy, and also use the reference to, for stability measurements. Um, then we wrap everything in, in, in shielding and to in also in, uh, in uh, anti radon system. So the anti radon system is a tent uh, of black polycarbonate tent where air is flushed uh, through a radon, call, a, radon, a radon trap to reduce the radon background, which is one of the main backgrounds we have in this kind of experiments. And then we, we will also pack everything into these different shielding layers. Uh, there is polyethylene for, for neutrons, iron for, uh, for gammas, and also water with bottom again for gammas and neutrons combined. So there are already uh, some papers on Super Nemo, even though the detector is commissioning. There is a technical paper on the purification of, uh, of the source, which is, which is shown here. This is the reference for the paper. And another paper about the source foil, preparation of the foils themselves, is under, is, under, is under development. And there are also technical papers that are under development on the tracker and on the calorimeter singularly. So now we move uh, to how the Super Nemo demonstrator builds on the Nemo 3 technology and enhances it. So first of all, this is an overlook of the Nemo, Nemo 3. So it really looks pretty much uh, like Super Nemo, but instead of being flat, it's, it's circular, has this, uh, this uh, circular shape. Um, it's, uh, we call it the Camembert, like it's a French cheese because it's pretty good for experiment based in France. And I also found it here in the, in the, in the lunchroom, so probably we can have it for lunch if you think about Super Nemo. And uh, uh, so the idea is that you can test different isotopes at the same time. Every slice has a different isotope. So uh, thanks to that, Nemo3 was able to set uh, world best limits and leading measurements on a large number of isotopes, which are listed here. You have references to all the, just this is a, a subsample of the articles you can find about, about Nemo3. And uh, these are some latest results. Uh, this, for example, is a detailed study of the molybdenum uh, 203 nanometer beta decay um, of, of in Nemo 3, and we were able to, dis to disentangle the single state value versus the higher state dominance, uh, favoring, highly favoring the single state. And the second paper you can see on the right here is a paper on the decay of Nemo 82 into chromium excited states, and this is how the um, data are, this background model, and basically we were able to constrain both lifetime to the, on this interaction of the neutrino less and neutrino of beta decay of, uh, of uh, selenium 82. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so uh, this is, uh, this table here summarizes 
all the uh, different upgrades between Nemo 3 and Super Nemo. So basically, uh, we start with the mass is roughly the same as you see, uh, just changing main isotope from molybdenum to selenium. And uh, for the first thing that is improved in is the detector technology, so the calorimeter itself, uh, the energy resolution is better thanks to a number of causes. Here is this spy chart resumes all the causes. Uh, the main one are the cathode the quantum efficiency is improved. Also, the coupling of the scintillator and optical on, on the plastic scintillator and the photomultiplier is improved. And electronics and scintillator composition and also the wrapping are improved. And thanks to that, we basically halve the energy resolution by going through from 8% at 3 MeV, which is the region of interest, to 4% at 3 MeV. So the second thing, uh, please give me more time, <laughs> is, um, is the sort of purity. So uh, in Nemo 3, we had this level here, 100 mi mi microbecker and 300 microbecker for tel tellurium and, uh, and the bismuth. And we were improving this by a factor of 100, basically, on, or even more on, on, both, on both levels. So uh, this is thanks to the production of the, of the source, of course, and is measured in different ways. So how do we measure these activities? First of all, uh, we have uh, every material that is used in SuperNemo, including from cable ties to every wire and, and, and cable, are measured with Germanium detector to characterize the emission of gammas. And this is how the Germanium detector looks like. So everything that we use basically has uh, activity that ranges from 0 0.1 to 1 millibecquerel per kilo, or less, of course. So uh, the tracker then is flushed with the helium mixture to a radon trap to reduce the radon activities. And these are the values that we obtain uh, with, with this flashing technique. Uh, to measure the, the, the radon, radon is so low, the activity is so low in the tracker that we have to use a concentration line. So the idea is that we flash argon into the tracker and then we accumulate the radon which is emitted and measure it with this device that is, show, that is shown here in this, uh, in this picture. And lastly, also uh, radon is studied on the emanation radon is studied for every material. For example, this is, this is a radon emanation chamber where we put for the multiviolence to study the, the emanation of radon, especially for the glass, which is the most, uh, the, the most radioactive part. And also every layer that we use is tested for permeability using this, this, this device here to measure the radon that is, can go through uh, the material. And uh, lastly, so as I said, uh, thanks to all these things, we can improve the sensitivity from Nemo 3 to Super Nemo by a factor of six, basically. But the final idea is that the Super Nemo sort of works as a proof of principle of the full detector, which consists of 20 modules, and will start to scratch the inverse hierarchy region by reaching sensitivity of the order of 26, 10 to 26 years. So a little bit of the milestone of the Super Nemo assembly, the Nemo assembly. So first of all, half detector with the tracker and calorimeter was tested in 2018. Uh, the detector was closed in 2019 at the end of the year, and later, after a few, a few, few weeks, the calorimeter started already taking some data. It's fully functional, electronic is, is there, the cable is uh, fully plug and functional, the EQ is working. So we have been commissioning the, the calorimeter and taking data with analyzing for the last year, basically. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the signal operations are still ongoing. We are trying to, we, we reach over pressure, meaning that we can now start to fill, fill the tracker without losing gas. And also, um, the tracker installation and cabling is ongoing for electronics especially. So we expect to finish the, the installation, install the coil and the shielding by the end of this year, meaning that taking data from the taking will start officially in 2020, so stay tuned. So uh, now a little bit of the commissioning data. All right, this one. So as I said, since November 2018, we are taking data with the calorimeter, analyzing this, this data. These are some preliminary results. You can see here, for example, the uh, attenuation of the charge sent to optical module to, to, to check the cable length and check optical module, and this is how it looks like. Also here you can see studies on the uh, trigger rates from the French wall, and also a study of the coincidence between the crosstalk between optical module, which means that we, me we measure how some events can uh, be detected in two different optical modules, or there can be some electronic crosstalk in that uh, acquisition. Um, we are also starting the way from the baselines. This is the equalization of the baselines, how it looks like. And these are some example of waveforming for the multipliers and the amplitude of, of, of events. So um, now just the last part, uh, how is the physics scope of Super Nemo? So as I said, uh, main goal for us is search for the kilometer decay of the Senu-82. Sensitivity goal, uh, thanks to the improvement in technology respect to, to, to Nemo-3, is to uh, reach these levels of 6 times 24 years for selenium, which correspond to a mass uh, limit on the mass of 140 to 400 millilectron volt. But also, thanks to the fact that we can discriminate uh, all the, uh, all the um, topology of the event, 
we can access uh, the different studies, such for example, the discrimination between single cell and ISA dominance in the cumulative beta decay to a level um, exceeding the five sigmas. Also, we can work on the concerning of GA, which is also a hot topic nowadays, and search for exotic mechanism behind the possible continuous beta decay interaction. And also, thanks to the fact that this, our source is modular, we can still, in principle, open the detector, change the source, and study different isotopes, for example, neodymium or, cal or, or calcium, to test neutrinoless beta decay, but also uh, neutrinoless quasi beta decay, more exciting interaction. So, this is the end of the talk, just to summarize. Um, so the supernova demonstrator is ongoing the commissioning right now, and uh, since, since one year ago, and we started taking it in 2020, so stay tuned. Um, it builds on the technology of NEMO3, which improves in a different way. The detector, detector, the detector um, detection techniques is improved, as well as the background mitigation, and also the, uh, the different techniques we use to reduce radon. Um, in, in the gas. So with 6.3 kilo of selenium, we aim to reach sensitivity of the order of 6 to 24 for years. And the scientific scope includes also other searches, for example, this single state vessel higher state dominance discrimination, the concerning of GA, and also search for exo more exotic interaction. And in principle, this uh, supernova demonstrator act uh, as a proof to demonstrate that we can improve the technology of NEMO3 and build a large detector of 100 kilogram to uh, start scratching into the inverse hierarchy. Reason. And uh, this is, thank you very much for your attention. And if you have questions, 